Fighting robots represent probably one of the biggest challenges in engineering because there is no perfect design. Forty robot fighting teams are about to take on one of the most intense engineering challenges in the world. Advice I'd give to roboteers entering the arena is don't panic and try not to die. To design, build and battle heavyweight fighting robots to compete for the ultimate prize. Through chaotic group battles and fierce head-to-heads, new and veteran teams of robot engineers must push their reinforced war machines to the limits. Their robots are harder, faster, stronger, designed for one thing, total destruction in pursuit of victory. Welcome to the final of Robot Wars. Over the past six weeks, this huge warehouse has housed 40 teams, each of them pushing the very limits of design and technology to create the perfect fighting machine. So it all comes down to this. Only one team can be crowned the new Robot Wars champion, so buckle up for the grand final. We began with 40 fighting robots, flippers, spinners, axes, and even crabs, foxes, and jellyfish. Fight after brutal fight, they took to the arena in pursuit of glory. Only the toughest teams survived to reach tonight's grand final. We now have five heat winners who will be joined tonight by a wild card chosen by the judges. The robots will fight it out in two group battles, with the four winning teams going into a mini league. They'll face each other once before the two teams with the most points battle it out to take home that Robot Wars trophy. Our judges have chosen the wild card based on aggression, damage, and control. Thor, Pulsar, Cherub, Sabretooth and Apollo. You are all runners up, but one team has been chosen by the judges to rejoin as our wildcard. The robot rejoining the competition and now in our grand final. It's Apollo. Done. Here we go again. Here, here we are. We able to go again? Well, yeah. I mean, we might look like a paper robot at the moment because uh, there's been a lot of welding and uh, it could just explode again. Can Great. you make it two in a row? Uh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, give it up for our finalists, <laughs> Apollo. <laughs> Apollo. So our first group battle is between Apollo, aftershock, and eruption. Aftershock. Vertical Spinner. Aftershock were born from last series' shockwave. They were unbeaten in their heat due to their hugely destructive vertical spinner. The improvements have certainly paid off. It seemed to work. The disc uh, caused a lot of damage by the look of things. Yeah. Despite being a brand new machine, it's already become the robot to beat. The ultimate dream is to become the Robot Wars champion. And that's what we're going to do. Eruption. This father and son team have racked up more air miles than Richard Branson as they sent robot after robot flying out of the arena. We're so happy with how it's gone so far, it's gone exactly to plan. Underestimate Michael's experience and skill as a driver at your peril. Winning Robot Wars, um, there's nothing that can quite compare to that. Apollo Flipper. The reigning champions Apollo felt like marked men from the start. Despite brilliant driving, they crashed back down to earth in their heats. Come on, leave us alone. Stop it. That's nasty, that, isn't it? Will the wild card be the break they need to keep the title? We've got the advantage. We know how to win Robot Wars. And this year, we're going to make it two times Robot Wars champions. The time for talk is over. Teams must now prove in these final ruthless group battles that they're worthy of becoming the Robot Wars champion. 
It's over to Jonathan. Thanks, Dara and Angela. Here we go then for the final rules of engagement. Our simple robots must try and immobilize their opponent. This can be done by flipping them out of the arena, by pushing them down the pit, or by inflicting critical damage. Battles fought over three minutes, and if there's no clear winner at the end of that time, the decision is made by our judges. Professor Noel Sharkey, Dr. Lucy Rogers, and Professor Seitu Vijaya Kumar will be marking on control damage and aggression. And in this grand final, the competitors won't just be avoiding the arena hazards, they'll also have to avoid a death dance with one of the house robots. House robots are limited to their corner patrol zones unless released by a competitor pressing the arena button. The button can either release the pit or release a house robot to inflict damage anywhere across the arena. Dare you unleash the rogue house robots. The teams are entering the arena. From Warrington. Eruption. Father and son Adrian and Michael Oates have modified their powerful flipping robot. Eruption can flip with over a ton of force and now has 10 millimeter thick armored side pods for deflecting spinets. From Reading, Aftershock. Last year, this father and son team from the Thomas family made it to the grand final with their pusher bot Shockwave. Aftershock has a 23 kilo spinner spinning at 3,500 RPM. They also have a separate 13.5 kilo bar, especially designed to take on carbine. From North Wales. Apollo has a new 1,000 PSI full-pressure system. Their 100mm ball ram helps them produce five tons of flip. Apollo might be big, but it's also quick, with a top speed of 12 miles an hour. In the corner patrol zone, the king of carnage, Sir Killalot. Roboteers, stand by. All of them optimistic, including the champions. Three, two, one. Activate. Apollo moving away, trying to stay out of trouble. Half the shot's left itself open there for an attack, and Apollo flips it. Yes, yes. No wonder they're celebrating. That was a big hit on Aftershock, but they seem to be okay. And now they're ganging up on Apollo. Erupt oh, there's a problem there with the floor plate. That's not fair. I'm stuck oh, from the arena. They need to stop this. The arena is damaged. That's the attack on Aftershock. Sparks flew. There's the damage to the floor plate. Apollo get themselves wedged and then took a hit from Aftershock. You can see why it had to stop. They couldn't move freely across the arena floor. So the battle has to stop while a repair takes place. The sheer power of Aftershock's vertical spinner has pulled up the flooring. It's a nervous wait for the teams as the arena floor is repaired. The floor's uh, six mil thick, solid steel, um, with, with wood underneath to keep it really solid. And this year, the robots have taken a huge step up in power. We've not had this kind of damage on the floor before. You couldn't do that with sledgehammers if you were hitting these all day long, so there's some serious power there. Teams agree that the match will restart from the opening positions without recharging weapons or batteries. Three, two, one. Activate. Battle is resumed. Damage has been sustained. Awesome power unleashed again. You really wouldn't want to be the arena floor. That's a massive slam there as they came together, and I think Apollo have been knocked out with that. The champs here are facing elimination in the first major shock of the grand final. Oh. After shock and eruption through. <laughs> Hey, we didn't know. Didn't we? Oh, I, uh... Absolute smash! Apollo, a heavy machine, lifted like a feather. Aftershock will be a team to beat here. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's the moment they knew they were done. Clever driving from eruption to stay out of trouble. 
Well, you see, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to attack <laughs> the robot rather than attack the arena. Uh, and there's an element of ganging up on poor old Apollo here that I thought was going on. You're kind of marking him into the corner so you could deliver the death blow. How very dare you. I'm just saying, <laughs> you're happy with the, how that went, I presume? Yeah, we, uh, that was a big old hit the second time. We didn't even see where it flew off to. We just yeah. saw the impact and then... Yeah, it made a loud, they didn't a loud come back. old bang. Yeah, yeah, they didn't yeah. come back from that one, no. You were in attendance there. Uh, you, yeah, uh, yeah. you had relatively little to do. At what point were you supposed to join in? Melly's were about surviving, really. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> and we thought that they were quite keen to go for each other. And, you know, we let them do it. It's clever, it's canny, you know, you've got go bigger fights ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. Apollo, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure it has bigger fights ahead Good of you. Good luck in the final. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that robot, you know, is there any, you know, will we see it again? I wonder. Not in that exact. Uh, formation that it will get changed and the, the spinners that are coming in are absolutely incredible so we need to uh, make sure we can take those impacts ladies and gentlemen a final goodbye to apollo give a round of applause <laughs> you guys. Thank you. and going through going through to a series of what will be i suspect a brutal series of head to head <laughs> let's give a huge round of applause to aftershock and eruption Apollo's departure means that we'll now have a new champion. For Mark and Dave, it's the end of an emotional journey. You are right, Mark? Do you want a hug? Come on, man. Come on, hug it. There's something about this robot that doesn't give up, and I think us giving up on it might be a bit of a hardship as well. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be back. As one chapter ends, a new one begins. Fatal blow was struck by aftershock. Well, well, it turned out to be a bit of a beast. Yeah, yeah it's well, um. Yeah. I mean, you had the potential, but it's it's really, you know, quite beyond our normal skills. You know, we build it in the back of the shed. We're thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have got this far. Can't can't believe it. Fellow finalist Eruption, all too aware of the danger posed by Shockwave Spinner, happily, or some might say tactically, took a back seat in that fight. I think the group match we were terrified for. The group battles are just brutal. We went in there with just the tactic of survival, and it worked out for us. But they didn't come away completely unscathed. The flipper's a little bit twisted because of that hit. We've got to strain it out a little bit, but mostly I think we're OK. It's time for our second group battle with Ironside 3, Concussion and Carbide. Carbide. Spinner. Built by a team of engineers, many teams fear even saying Carbide's name out loud for fear of meeting this green-eyed spinner in the arena. People want to see stuff getting smashed, that's why we're here. Second place last series, and with Apollo gone, who can stop them now? Starbot has a reputation for being the meanest machine around, and we want to keep that reputation. Ironside 3, Bar Spinner. Ironside 3 fight with their brains as much as their huge bar spinner. Never one to rush into a battle if it can be avoided, but happy to deliver the killer blow when required. You must be happy with how that went. Very happy. Yeah. Very ecstatic. Impressive. Not bad. For Ironside 3, often the best form of offense is defense. You can come at us almost any angle and we're going to hit you. And at the minute, we're not scared of anybody. Concussion Drum Spinner. These newbies went from fans to finalists and have proved worthy of their place, defeating the mighty Thor in their heat. Yeah! Yes! Yes! No matter the reputation of their opponent, this orange beast shows no fear. The feeling of winning Robot Wars would be almost second to none. Time now to put the hard work and dreams of these final three teams to the sword. Only two go through to the head-to-heads. Will two of these gang up again to knock out one poor victim? From the Midlands, Carbide. In many people's eyes, Carbide is king of the spinners. Carbide's 25 kilo blade might not be the biggest in the competition, but it's definitely the most powerful. 20 horsepower and 2,300 RPM makes for a potent combination. From Nottingham, Ironside 3.
This compact octagonal spinner has an 18 kilo bar with a top speed of 1500 RPM. Their self rights are crucial because the robot can't drive upside down. In their heat, Ironside's weapon drive belt continually caused the team problems. From war, concussion. Concussion has a 6000 RPM spinner built from a single piece of high carbon steel. This team of engineers went from being in the audience last series to being competitors in this one. They've done fantastically to get this far. He's an axe to the max. It's the titanium tipped axe of Shunt. Roboteers, stand by. One of these competitors' journey will end here. Who will it be? Three, two. Activate. Off we go. And Carbide immediately aiming at concussion. And I can hear the death hum already of Carbide's rotor up to speed. Oh, hit him, Adam. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Concussion in trouble here. And the other teams are moving in for the kill. Oh. <laughs> and the concussion boys know they're in trouble. Oh, Carbide. Goodness me. More pushing power. More venom in the blade. And look at the two of them now. Oh, Eibel to Eibel. They don't need to fight because concussions are knocked out. Loved it. Loved it. Awesome. Well, the Robot Wars fans have been living the dream. It's gone now. Nightmarish right from the start. They knew they were going to sustain punishment. Ooh, so did I side three there. I think that's not their self rights are out, you know. They came back to bash concussion into submission. That was the end of little concussion. And the two big spinners survive off to hit again. The dream ends here. Oh, the dream. We went past the dream ages. <laughs> OK, OK, that's the spirit. Did they gang up on you? Uh, we did feel really. pinned a little, but that's the aim of the whole game, isn't it? You've got to give a good show. We loved your enthusiasm, and I really hope we'll see you again soon. Please <laughs> give it up for concussion. Thank you. Yeah. Carbide, textbook for you? Oh uh, yeah, it went really well. Um, yeah. What I can remember of you, it went that quick, but yeah, yeah. bits yeah. are flying everywhere, so it's pretty fun. Ironside, I felt like that you guys just hung back and said, "We'll just sit this." Sit this out. We got involved a little bit. A, a, a little yeah, bit. A what did you do? Because I can't remember. We gave a few tickles out. A little <laughs> tickle. Right. Well, listen, big congratulations, Ironside 3 and Carbide. Thank you. It's the end of the road for concussion. Wow. Look at that. That's not too bad. you got to go out with a bang. Yeah, yeah, a bit of paint, it'll be fine. Polish it. Ironside 3 returned to the pits, delighted to be in the final four. But they too felt the hard steel of Carbide's weapon, taking out their all-important self-writer. Yeah, we're not convinced that the self is going to work. Not now. It's a nightmare for the team, all too aware that this same issue cost them their shot at the last series. The cause of everyone else's pain, Carbide, have a quick peek under the bonnet. Electronically, everything still looks solid. The gearbox is and makes it feel smooth on the drive. Chain tension is still good, no issues. Looks good from here. Charge it up, go again. Are we, are we scratch their paint, do you know? Now we have our final four robots. Time for the one-on-one -on -one head to head. Team scored three points for a win, two for a judge's decision, and zero for a loss. First up, it's Eruption against Ironside 3. Both teams are desperate to get some points on the leaderboard. That is a massively damaging robot, and we are worried about this thing. It could do a lot of damage to us. The only help we've got is Carbide has taken out their sub -writer. So if, and it's still a big if, because it's a brilliant robot and it could just take us out, if we manage to get upside down. We should be okay. That's got to be the tactical stuff. And as contradictory as it sounds, we don't want to cause much damage to Ironside because we're also quite scared about aftershock and carbide. So if we can keep them spinning, they've then got to go in with the other two. If they can be spinning and deliver a big hit to them, that could help us out. So you've got to be really tactical at this stage and consider what your best chances are to take out all your opponents, even in the fights you're not in. It's time to take care of business.
the canny flipper faces off against the huge spinner with the damaged self-writer. On the team, we have myself, Adam. I'm a production engineer. Trevor's the same. He's also a production engineer. Louise works in a school, and Patricia's a cook. Ironside 3 is one of the strongest robots in the competition. It's small and compact, so we can have thicker armour and take bigger hits. The key feature of Ironside 3 is its bar. It's hugely powerful, it spins at 1500 RPM and has a net weight of 18 kilos. The bar is mounted above the machine, not inside it like carbide. This means our bar is bigger, can be heavier and can hit harder, so we can dish out some real damage. Winning Robot Wars would be a great recognition of how hard we've worked and how much design and time we've put into a machine. The ultimate dream for Ironside 3 is that we win Robot Wars and then come back and defend it. Ready to wreck Ironside 3's dreams of victory is Eruption. On our team is me, Michael, and my dad, Adrian. I'm an engineering student at university and my dad works for a research laboratory. Eruption is designed around the weapon. It's all about the flipper. Eruption's got a custom control circuit in it, which means we can vary the amount of gas we put into each flip. So we can conserve gas when we need to, but also put a huge amount of gas into one particular flip and get a massive flip on our opponents to throw them out the arena. I was inspired to build robots purely down to Robot Wars. I watched the TV show when I was two, three years old, and I've been fascinated ever since. If everything goes right for us on the day, this could be a champion. In the CPZ, the nicest 350 kilogram robotic triceratops, I know, Matilda. And shunt. Three, two, Eruption against Ironside 3. Can Ironside 3 stay right side up long enough to deal damage to the mighty Eruption? Oh! Mighty flip from Eruption. We've seen that throughout this series of Robot Wars. And Ironside 3 now tactically running away. And into that corner area where Eruption flips it against the side wall and Ironside 3 can't self right. He's over. Good at, good at. Game over. Brilliant from Eruption. Sensational stuff. They got their tactics absolutely bang on. Ironside 3's earlier damage has cost them so dearly. Into flip. Up it went. Bounced. That was okay. Still right side up. But here, over and, I'm afraid, out. Eruption executed their secret plan to perfection. We knew if we went upside down, we were toast. We didn't expect to get a lot of damage. We just expected to be upside down. I think uh, they're going to have a bit more damage to fix than we are. Ironside's an awesome machine, and even though we got the win, it has hurt a lot. We knew he didn't have a self-writer, so when he went up the arm, we had to take a chance and flip him. And I think what's happened is, as the flipper's gone up and thrown him into the air, the spinner has caught the side of the flipper and completely bent it over out of shape. Eruption may be battered, but they're three points better off. Be anymore, so. Our next head-to-head -head is Carbide versus Aftershock. This fight promises to be an apocalyptic collision between two heavy hitters. This next fight, I think, is the one everyone's wanted to see. It's a uh, big horizontal spinner versus big vertical spinner. And I think between us, we've dished out some of the biggest hits this year. This will be the first time Aftershock face Carbide, and they're tailoring their attack. With our disc, there is always a point sticking out which Carbide or any horizontal could hit. The bar gives us the option of having the bar hidden by the bulkheads at certain stages during the uh, rotation. So it means we could potentially miss their bar and come up underneath it. So we can hit them before they hit us. Our only real option is quite well defended. It's just to go weapon to weapon. 
Um, hopefully we'll come out on top. It's going to be a big bang either way. One massive hit from either of us is who knows what can happen. It's kill or be killed, really. We're going to do everything we can to knock them out. Hold on to your hats. The two most powerful spinners in the history of Robot Wars are about to enter the arena. Me and Sam are both qualified engineers working for the nation's biggest companies. Carbide is a combination of both of our efforts. In the final of the last series, we were against Apollo, who won. The weapon packed up, and feel if it had kept turning, then we might have had a better chance. So we went back to the drawing board with the most of the powers of the weapon. We decided we need to make our own. The new one's absolutely micron precision, completely to our own design. A few teams got a bit of an easy ride last year when our bar stopped working. Hopefully that's not going to happen again. Hoping to smash rather than be smashed, it's Aftershock. I'm Will Thomas. I'm the team captain and the driver of Aftershock. My dad, Ian Thomas, is our main engineer responsible for building the robot. Aftershock is a massive spinning disc on a really tough armoured chassis. Aftershock's greatest strength is the huge amount of kinetic energy it stores in its weapon. Using that, it can create unparalleled forces in the Robot Wars arena. Last time, Carbide knocked us out of the competition, causing loads of damage to Shockwave. This time, Aftershock is ready for it. The ultimate aim for Aftershock is to become the Robot Wars champion. That's what we're built for, that's what we're aiming for, and that's what we're going to do. Love it. Aftershock against Carbide when these two spinners meet head on. Always going to be one almighty bang. Three, two, one. Activate! Aftershock has the fastest spinner. Carbide, the heaviest spinner. Oh, oh. This could be one of the great Robot Wars battles. But what has happened here to Aftershock straight away? The impact of the first blow. A shattered Aftershock's dreams! Paneling coming flying off! Electronics exposed! But listen to Carbide's death hum! No, 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 no! And again, gone. It's a death rattle for Aftershock! Oh, get away from that CPZ, Carbide! Shunt was waiting in the... Goodness me! It's really gone through the arena wall! Look at that, Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have never seen that before. The damage caused by Carbide here is sensational. Off came the side armor. That's the side panel. Look, 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 it's there through the wall. Carbide waited its moment. It had its prayer at its mercy. And it destroyed Aftershock's dream there. OK, that is the first. That is, we've never seen that before. And that, I mean, we couldn't have placed that better. This glass, by the way, is one layer of polycarbonate. That's bulletproof glass, and it just went through. The arena itself is, is four times as thick. Uh, so we feel, still feel that the audience and ourselves are, we're safe enough. But if you're sitting over there, if you're the audience members over there... They are freaked There's out. a kind of a ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
You've got to admire their never say die attitude, but with only two hours repair time, could this be the end of Aftershock? After our round one, the table looks like this. Carbide and Eruption are both in the full three points, while Ironside 3 and Aftershock have yet to score. Next up, it's a top of the table clash. Carbide versus Eruption. Eruption have had time to repair their warped flipper. Meanwhile, Carbide have scoped out the opposition and noticed a potential weakness. So we've noticed on Eruption the uh, side armour is attached directly to their wheels and their bearings and shafts, so if we give them a good hit there, it should immobilise their drivetrain. Um, if we can do that, we'll be out, come out on top. An outright win here would earn either team a place in the grand final. Carbide against Eruption. Can they end Carbide's trail of carnage? Three, two, one. Activate. You know what Carbide are going to do? Go for those side panels. But we know how dangerous that flipper of Eruption can be. And the power of the Carbide spinning blade sends both robots rocking across the arena floor. And again, this is a terrific battle here. Oh, this is a good battle. Steam being vented out of eruption. I think that's immobilised. But look at the sparks there. I think their weapon controllers died. No flips, no hope. Going, going, gone. Oh, legends. Good work, man. That is intense. They've got the smile of Cheshire Cats with the green. Oh, well. so well for eruption there they came together big crunch carbide bouncing now you see the co2 venting so we know that power is draining from eruption despite the self-writing there they had too much to do metal came flying off that was the first battle that you lost in the entire competition yeah you were fearful of carbides. Oh, yeah. Well, really. Everyone is fearful of carbides, yeah. so yeah. But the first 10 seconds or so went to plan. We hit them with the front of the robot, which is strong. They did ricochet off from the impacts, but something must have come loose and it stopped driving them from then on. Do you think there'll be much repairs to be done? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly silent, yeah. internal <laughs> weeping. OK. Um, carbides, Hello. you're through to the grand final. Thank you. Yeah, you brilliant. promised me some cheer and some Woo. excitement, at least. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I thought for a second there was a, a, yeah, a slight wobble. Yeah. It was the first time I've oh, ever we, seen you yeah, kind we of... Yeah, flying, didn't we? We spun around yeah. about six times. And yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're a great team. We do have a lot of respect for that machine. You've won every fight so far. Yeah. Not one of your fights has lasted over a minute. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, please give it up for Carbide again into the grand final and of course eruption. Cheers, thanks guys. Eruption has been ripped to shreds. Eight millimeter hardened steel and Carbide's cut straight through it. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> there should be a panel there. That piece was there, that's the front of it. Get that piece out and belt the whole rest of the whole panel underneath the robot. Well, it's pretty bad, but you know, that's what Robot Wars is about. You take damage and you've got to repair it, move forward and try and get back in the arena. In our next head-to-head -head is Ironside 3 and Aftershock. If Ironside 3 don't pick up some points in this fight, their campaign will be over. But Aftershock are in the middle of the biggest rebuild of the series and time is against them. We've got less than 45 minutes now to get back into the arena. So it's going to be tight. At the very least, we can get it driving. If we're quick enough, we should be able to get the weapon in as well. It's all or nothing for Ironside 3. We'll get this tension up like a bowstring. Get her up to full chat and play a bit of Russian roulette, I suppose. <laughs> Aftershock race to repair their robot. They've completed the welding to the chassis, but need to cool down the metal as quickly as possible. 
It's too hot to touch and they still need to refit every single component. Uh, so we've got new braces on the front, we've got uh, a new side panel that's been made and just a load of work has been done to uh, get it back in. With tempers fraying, it's not just the chassis that needs to cool down. It went, no, it went. No, but... leave it. I'm, it's not aligning, William. I can't see it's, it's, it's catching on that. No, it's not. It's not. I'm looking at it now. Look, it's not catching there. You get the try. Leave me to do it. Just get the try. I do that side. Yeah. Hey, okay, guys, you've got 25 minutes to your next fight. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Are you going to be ready? Uh, we'll see. Good. Can't say much more at the moment. If they don't make it in time, Ian and Will must forfeit their place in the competition. Quick, quick, quick. Tape, tape, tape. It's over there. You've got it. This once feared fighting robot reduced to having its polycarbonate armour taped up. They've done it. They've rebuilt their machine and can now take their place in the arena alongside Ironside 3. In the corner patrol zone, the king of carnage, Sir Killalot. And here's the scoop. It's shunt. Three, two, one. Activate. After shock have gone into the arena with sticky back plastic tape. Are you sure? But they're after Ironside 3 here, and they look as if they're up to full power. What a marvellous job they've done, a miraculous job. And they're in the arena! Stick it there on Ironside 3, and again! Oh, they were lucky in bouncing down the right side. Up there. Aftershock's hit the arena wall. Aftershock control problems here, it would seem. You out of control? No. Well, he doesn't think they are out of control. Young Will. And he comes back on the attack. And OK! Hits the spinning bar of Ironside 3, the 18 kilo bar. Running at 1,500 RPM. Good battle, this. Go, 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 go. Go on. But for who? Will the dream end here? Ironside 3 pushes off the shock onto the floor, pins. Up come the spikes. Off the shock, upended. Off the shock, can't recover. No, 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 you're going to be gloomy and doomy tonight. That's the right way, well done. Let's lose like that. Three points for Ironside 3. Oh, look at the shattering power of Ironside 3's blade. Ripped off the sticky back plastic. They were OK bouncing down. Aftershock. Absolutely in pieces. <laughs> oh, I dream of things like this. That was great. That was a really good fight, and it, it wasn't how we expected it to end, but... The arena had its revenge. It did, it did. <laughs> it did, it did. you <laughs> have... Uh, and elegantly didn't go in for the final blow. Or were you afraid that you'd tip them back over and it would start well, again? No, because now we really need them to do us a favour and have a good go at eruption. Well, that's it, because the intriguing thing, if you beat eruption, you could have three teams on three points, in which case it would go to an adjudication. So, it's all still to play for. No points for you, I'm afraid, but three points for Ironside 3! A solitary arena spike unravels all of Aftershock's hard work in the pits. But for Ironside 3, it was the precious three points. Aftershock is a brute of a machine, and yes, they only just got it in in time, but I still have to be able to get round them and hit them. It spun up nicely. And it, it? spun up, it spun so, up you know, they did have an active weapon, and if we charged them, he quite easily could have beat us. Gaffer tape armour isn't ideal, but we did exactly what we needed to do, which was make one big impact, run away, and then uh, pick him off if we could. So it's exactly what we needed, really. It's another massive repair job against the clock, but they haven't given up hope. So the main damage is to our weapon motor, so we have a great big shower of sparks as that let go. Uh, we then got a bit of chassis damage, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was in the last fight. We're going to see what uh, we could do to the motor, and what will be will be. We're not dead and buried yet. After a second round of head-to-head -head battles, the leaderboard looks like this. 
Carbide have six points and are through to tonight's grand final. Eruption and Ironside 3 are both on three points and Aftershock is looking forlorn at the bottom on no points. Next up, it's Carbide versus Ironside 3. Shane, Shane, Tenchu. Shane, all look all right. With their place in the final confirmed, Sam and Dave are keen not to take any unnecessary damage. Watching their fights, they're quite slow to spin up. Um, if we can get in there before they're up to speed, damage the bar or the chassis or something around there, hopefully that'll be all it will need. There is more reach on Ironside's bar here, a chance then for them to get the first hit in on Carbide and cause some damage. Three, two, one. Activate. Carbide's death pump already whirring. They get the first blow in on Ironside 3, that could have been crucial. But Ironside getting away across the arena floor quite quickly. The battle developing off the floor flipper. Survive that. Come in for another slice on Carbide's armament, which is so, so strong. One little scratch so far. Big flash. Ironside 3 worn down into submission. The weaponry is stopped. Carbide goes. Such worries for them. Ironside 3. Get out of there. Get out of there. Scuttle out of there as quick as you can. Just avoiding the axe blade there from the house robot. Carbide. So menacing, so mean. Sparks fly, but no damage for Carbide. Four, three, two, one. Six. Ironside three, counted out. Something doesn't look too good. Are they okay? They're just testing here their maneuverability. Did they sustain damage? Well, not really there. Ironside 3, another story though. But five millimetres of hardened steel armament turned into papier mache. Oh, awesome. But has Carbide sustained real damage there? Oh, he's taking a hit on the whole. Right. That fight was pretty intense. it uh, be interesting to get back to see what's gone wrong. We've had um, a bit of a. Clocking on the front. We were super lucky there because it's literally millimetres from hitting our chain. The seemingly invincible carbide has taken its first potentially game ending damage. With the final in sight, this was exactly the scenario they feared. Yeah, so it caused us a lot of issues last time, but we made this motor. We did have a couple of motor cutouts uh, towards the end of that match. Yeah, I don't know what that was. You don't want that in the final. Just want to check all the connections are good. And it's spinning nice and freely. To go out now for something silly would be oh, stupid, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> so we're just going to check absolutely everything, make sure it's running perfect. With one head-to-head -head remaining, it's still all to play for. Team Carbide are on the maximum nine points and have secured their place in the grand final. But all three competitors could earn the right to join them. If Aftershock scored three points against Eruption in the last head-to-head, -head, it will be a three-way tie and our judges will decide who progresses to the grand final alongside Carbide. So it's time for Eruption versus Aftershock. Both teams have suffered at the merciless hands of Carbide. However, the winner of this fight could take not only revenge, but also the Robot Wars title. I'm here with Eruption, and they have a slight tactical advantage in this battle, don't you? Yeah, well, we've worked out the points, and because we beat Einside in our head-to-head, -head, if we win or just take it to a judge's decision, we should get through to the final. You could literally That's... just do laps. We could do, but could do. That's I think they'd probably catch us, though, at some point. It's th three minutes is a long time in that arena. Listen, the best of luck with this. The, yes. uh, you, you, your tactic, I know what your tactic is going to be, because I've seen you do yeah. this at all yeah, series. Yeah. You're just going to go for this, aren't you? Yeah, of course we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking forward to this. Eruption! What would it mean to you boys to win? 
I think after all the work and effort putting it back together, it would be awesome to win. This all or nothing it. this time round. Yeah. Right. We're going to go in, we're yeah, going to spin we the disc, and we're going to yeah. hit him as hard as we can. Yeah. yeah. And if it's good enough to get us through to fight Carbide, then yeah. we'll go for it again. Because if, if you win this, win you know it, yeah. it goes to a three-way tie, and then yep. obviously that's a that's judge's decision. Judges, yeah. If we do make it through, we'll give it everything we've got. OK, brilliant. Give it up, please, for Aftershock. For the first time tonight, with a top speed of 13 miles an hour, it's dead metal. And Matilda. Three, two, one. Activate. After Shook have done brilliantly to get this far and get that robot competitive again. But they can be flipped. Oh, How strong must go, Rhodes? But we've got a problem here. I think there, the blade caused damage to the floor as they came down. They killed the floor again. Oh, well. Down here. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes, I think it was the spinning blade there that ripped the arena floor. As they come in here on the arena button, that activated the house robots to go rogue. That's where the damage was sustained. You can see the sparks coming off the arena floor. After shock and eruption, have said they're happy to carry on, even though there is still damage to the arena floor. Three, two, one. Activate. They've had to wait, they've had to be patient. They couldn't touch their robots. In they come again. After shock, trying to churn down on that flipper and bend it out of shape. Eruption, pirouetting. After shock coming in. And dancing politically there with oh, oh, ill advised, ill advised. Yes, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Well, you are, but get out now. And you eruption backing away sensibly there. After shot coming in, but riding high on the flipper of eruption. Five times eruption of flip machines out of the arena. This is going to take a match there. This is a terrific contest. Oh, big throw. And then Aftershock's power blade hurled it even further across the arena floor. Back up, we'll reverse. They need to reverse and come in for another attack. Over goes Aftershock. Can they surf right from there? Oh, grimacing. Groaning. And giggling. Well, we love that approach. She loves the carnage of the arena floor, and don't we all? And the carnage being created here for eruption. Two great competitors and still slugging it out this late on in the series. Magnificent. Eruption still with the power of the flipper to turn off the shock over. Off the shock still with the power of the vertical spinner to cause major trouble for eruption. What's happened to Aftershock here? I don't think they can move. I think they're out. OK, let's just cut back and we cut, cut their losses. Eruption here could be cruel or kind. They're fine. Eruption through to the final against Carbide, and that will be a ferocious final. Good fight. Good fight. Oh, at least that was an entertaining one. Yeah, it? yeah, it was good. Well done, mate. Aftershocks. Huge power of the spinner. Really gruesome battle, this. It would have graced the final itself. Magnificent. Do you know what? I'm saying this now. I'm saying this now. I think that was the best fight of the series. Congratulations to both of you. That was fantastic. Am I right in saying that? How great was that? That was just fantastic. Properly duking it out, both yeah, of you, yeah. both trying to land yeah. that killer blow. It was fantastic. Even though you kept smashing up the arena, yeah, sorry. stop breaking <laughs> our room. <laughs> There's just pock marks and hole everywhere. Yeah. And I think Dead Metal took the worst of it as well. We had a yeah, good we, uh, pop aim as well. Yeah, really? <laughs> Great. We've got to repair that before we can send anyone out for yeah. a final. You also presume we have repairs to do. Yeah. But your plan was never really just to survive, was it? 
No, we want to we want to try and get them out of the arena, but they de delivered some really nasty hits on us. No points for you, right? Uh, and that one, but but you've been fantastic the entire way through. And aftershock yeah. has yeah. been a revelation, and it's been an absolute. I think fantastic. he's here to stay for a while now. Aftershock. Okay, yeah. cool. I, well, I look forward to seeing him again. You get all three points, which means going into the final and deservedly our eruption, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Aftershock's incredible journey ends here. If you've got to go out, go out swinging. We loved it. Swinging? <laughs> well, go out spinning. Spinning. <laughs> and Ironside 3 also put up a fantastic fight. We fought as long as we could. Uh, and obviously it wasn't long enough. Yeah, we, we did it. We've done all right. We've done all right. But Eruption now have the chance to fulfil a lifelong dream. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable, it really. Is. I mean, ever since I was, I think it was, I was two years old, and we used to sit down, Swald and Son, and we used to watch Robot Wars together. I think it's fair to say, since then, it has consumed our entire life yeah. for the past 12 years. So, you know, it's for me anyway. I, don't, I can't talk to my dad, but I yeah. imagine it's the same thing. I mean, for me, it's my dream come true to get this car in Robot Wars. I mean, you come here and all these benches were full of Roboteers and people without benches, not many Roboteers here and now there's not many left. We're in the last two now and it doesn't seem believable really, does it? The final scoreboard looks like this. Carbide on nine points, Eruption on six, Ironside three on three points and Aftershock on zero. Here we are then, the grand final, brutal spinner Carbide, who has destroyed everything in his path so far, versus the brilliantly driven flipper Eruption. Carbide is the runaway favourite, but they lost to a flipper in the final last series. Are we about to see the biggest upset in Robot Wars history? These two robots have paved a stratospheric path through the competition. In Eruption's group battle, they showed their tactical brilliance. You were in attendance there. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had relatively little to do. Melee's about surviving, really. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't so battle shy in the head to heads. Fight after fight, Michael has proven once again that to win, it takes more than brute strength. It's gonna hurt. There's no way of getting around it. It is gonna hurt and we're gonna take damage, but a flipper is still capable of winning robot wars. Carbide's ruthless efficiency establishes it as the robot to fear. It knocked out concussion with one hit. Charge it up, go again. They've yet to lose a fight, but last year they lost in the grand final after damaging their motor. Will lightning strike twice when it matters most? Yeah, well, that in the final. To go out now for something silly would be oh, stupid, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> We've been here before. Uh, we came a little bit short last year. Um, if we can do it this year, it'd be absolutely brilliant. Uh, Going to give it our best shot and disable some damage, hopefully. It's time for the grand final. Roboteers, stand by. This is it. Again, it's come down to Spinner against Flipper. Both of these teams have fought an exemplary campaign. If anyone has a chance of taming the beast of Carbide, I think it's Eruption. Good luck, mate. Good luck, man. Three, two, one. Activate! Will Carbide's weaponry survive this year's final, that will be key. Eruption need to position themselves to get a flip in. Carbide very, very quick. Eruption, don't forget, can lift a thousand kilos into the air. Carbide's deck up. Listen, can you hear it? Eruption trying to flip. The flipper sustained damage straight away. But certainly they can still move, Eruption, which is good to see. It's been a brilliant grand final so far.
carbide spinning away. The red hot plane of flesh slamming in on a rupture on the side panels. The angle of the armament very important, but at the moment it's carbide getting through that armor. What a comeback by eruption there! They can't take this too easily, carbide. If they get lackadaisical for a moment, eruption will flip them. They maneuver themselves again. They look to come in on the attack. See the sparks? That's what Carbide can do. Eruption with the flipper, but look at the damage to the flipper now. Has that weaponry packed in? Carbide senses they can come in. Eruption trying to flip and show everyone they're okay. I don't think they are. Oh, everything's coming up. Eruption now. Absolutely everything. Oh, what a battle it was. But Carbide worthy winners. Carbide champions. Carbide, the strongest of the strong. Brilliant stuff. Worthy winners. Well done, mate. You've done it. You've done it, man. <laughs> Eruption so brave. Oh, they don't deserve this. What Carbide knockout kill a lot. Oh, shunt's coming in. <laughs> oh, and remember, Carbide, you may be champions now, but the house always wins with the house robot. You need to get out of there. <laughs> they lost the weapon. Brilliant early on. Look at that. Prepared to give as much as they took eruption. But throughout the competition, Carbide have been at another level and it shows you how improved these new robots have become. What damage, what a battle, and what a great series it's been. Well done to both of you, that was, that was a fantastic final. It was a great fight, and I'll say it was a much better fight than I think even you were expecting. Yeah. Yeah, well, we limped eruption into the final, really. It it's four, four big spinners in a row now, back to back, and we were expecting about 10 seconds and something to go wrong, but we kept on going, and we lasted almost two minutes yes, which is with Carbide, bad, which was pretty this good, is really. as longer than anyone has lasted yeah. next to Carbide. All sorts of damage has been done. Yeah, well, that happens when you fight Carbide. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? And in that time, you also did the thing that nobody else did. You managed to flip Carbide yeah. at one stage. You get a flipper next to it, and you can feel like you've got to do something, so just press fire, and you keep, you keep on trying. Congratulations to you. It has been a superb performance the entire way through this year's Robot Wars. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Eruption. Carbide, what? What is there to say? An unstoppable force throughout this whole competition. Yeah, it's working pretty well now. <laughs> it, it is working pretty well. I mean, it just seems to be faultless, really. No, and no, in, in that fight, they're a tough nut to crack. It kept yeah. cutting out and cutting out, and we'd get close to them, we'd go to charge, and then it'd stop about a foot away from them. Yeah. I mean, after the last series final being done by Apollo, a flipper, yeah. you must have been a little... Yeah, nervous yeah, yeah. that history oh, was, may repeat itself. Yeah. It was great to get the revenge on Apollo earlier on, definitely. Obviously, there's just an awesome machine as well. So wind's obviously amazing. Well, you know what? It was wonderful watching you. Relentless, <laughs> relentless robot and gracious and always smiling. And now excited because you <laughs> promised. Uh, please make some noise for our Robot Wars champions, Carbide. There you go, Carbide. Congratulations. Fully yeah. deserved it. So congratulations on a faultless performance from Carver the entire way through the competition. From all of us here at Robot Wars, good night.